good afternoon and welcome to a shoot program that for a change is able to bring you a local game after several weeks of being limited in our choice of matches because as you know of the frost and snow. As usual we've got highlights of two other games to go with it and all three you're about to see are in fact from yesterday's fourth round of the FA Cup. They are first of all from Roker Park Sunderland's attempt to end Liverpool's interest in the competition in which the bookies made them favourites several weeks ago. Dalglish first time, lovely ball to Rush. Oh, how unlucky! But what skill from Rush! And from Wearside, we'll be switching to Luton for the second division leaders' tie against Ipswich. Steen is free on the right. Ricky Hill dragging a defender to him. Hill in a position here. Fantastic finish, now White. Desperately unlucky, Ricky Hill. And completing our lineup for us will be third division Gilliam, who were at home yesterday to West Brom. Still stay them. Set it up for Regis. Oh, what a fine save! And then against the post. Well... Three then of the 15 fourth round ties played yesterday, providing us with plenty of action. And Sunderland manager Alan Durban will also be telling us the latest position of the possible transfer to Roker of Liverpool midfield man Ray Kennedy. That comes later on, but it's the action from Roker Park with which we're getting underway, and they're waiting to guide us through the play as our match commentator, Roger Thames. There's nothing Roker Park enjoys more than the glamour of a big FA Cup tie. And today, against the Cup favourites Liverpool, Sunderland have a glorious chance to restore much of the confidence that has ebbed away from Alan Durban's struggling side. Those fans have Mick Buckley to thank for today's game being possible. He chose Monday night's replay against Rotherham to score his first goal since the opening day of the season and so put Sunderland into the fourth round. As expected, Alan Durban names the same 11 that disposed of Rotherham, so Jimmy Nicholl plays only his second game at right back, despite this week beginning his second month on loan from Manchester United. There is a change on the bench, though. Barry Venison makes way for Alan Brown, who was chosen for the first time since his transfer to Newcastle broke down. Liverpool were also in action this week, turning in a typically emphatic performance in the League Cup replay at Barnsley to win 3-1. So they've already secured a place in one Cup semi-final, but in the process they've lost Phil Thompson, who was carried off at Oakwell with a leg wound. So Alan Kennedy, who was born in Sunderland, is recalled at left-back, though he wears number four. And expensive signing Mark Lawrenson, wearing three, proves his versatility by switching to the middle of the defence. Today's referee is Alex Hamill from Wolverhampton. So it's Liverpool in all yellow who kick off, attacking the goal to our left. Sunderland in white shirts and red shorts. And Sunderland, despite home advantage, definitely the underdogs in this game. Though their recent form, where they won two and drawn one of their last three games, stretching back to the beginning of December, means that Roker Park is a rather more confident place than maybe their league position suggests. Cummins, and, it's Cummins who may get to it first, but Phil Neal covering well, and Sunderland have a corner, conceded by Phil Neal. Neal who passed a fitness test on a calf injury to make his 100th consecutive FA Cup tie for Liverpool. A remarkable record. But he and his colleagues have this corner to deal with from Sunderland. Buckley will take it. And March is on the near post. But Grobola managing to collect that one quite comfortably under pressure from Ali McCoist. Dalglish has made the run, Clark is with him. Oh, Dalglish has got past him. And how did he get it in from there? Kenny Dalglish gives Liverpool the lead. Five minutes gone. Bad mistake, though, in the heart of the Sunderland defence. And the culprit, Jeff Clark, really. Dalglish eluding the challenge and just recovering himself and through Siddall's legs. Kenny Dalglish gives Liverpool the lead. 
it's Sunderland nil, Liverpool won. There's just six minutes gone, and Sunderland have given themselves a mountain to climb now. Kenny Dalglish, his 13th goal of the season, and one that proves more unlucky for Sunderland. that a good start was important to them and they haven't got that one little bit and Liverpool now will be looking to press home their advantage this is Jimmy Nicholl there to add experience to the Sunderland rear guard and certainly they'll need that now and this is Ali McCoist cut out there by Hansen and Dalglish, a little touch there to rush. And Dalglish is through, and that was a superb move foiled by Barry Siddall. But Alan Hansen linked up so well then with his forwards, and the corner is quickly taken, and it's relentless now on Sunderland in the opening stages. But what a move that was by Liverpool, springboarding into attack. Hansen linking there superbly and getting the return ball from Ian Rush and a first-time shot that Siddall was pleased to beat away. Now Cummins <laughs> to exploit an awkward bounce in the middle of the Liverpool defence that had Mark Lawrenson struggling. But Stan Cummins nipped in behind the big man and tried to flick the ball over Grobelar into the net, but he was just too high. March. Dalglish first time, lovely ball to Rush. Oh, how unlucky! But what skill from Rush, and it's still going. Well, a let-off there for Sunderland. The ball threaded through, but play at the other end is going now, and it's Cummins who tries to equalise there. An excitement at both ends there. First, Sunderland under pressure, and they were lucky to escape. Dalglish through the middle there, Rush was onto it like a flash. He saw Siddall was off his line, tried to chip in, and that's how close he was to giving Liverpool 2-0 lead. Dalglish, he's got a bit of room. Oh, that is just brilliant from Kenny Dalglish. You don't give Kenny Dalglish room anywhere. 2-0 to Liverpool. There really didn't look to be that much danger, but Dalglish saw he'd been given room and he had the time to line up the shot and that was just inch perfect. Siddall had no chance. 16 minutes gone, Kenny Dalglish gets his second goal of the game. It's Sunderland nil, Liverpool two. And Liverpool really are rubbing the salt in Sunderland's early wound. So what can Sunderland do about this scoreline? Kenny Dalglish really punishing them for two lapses of concentration in the middle of the defence. Now it's McCoist. Tries one. Good effort, but Robillard alert. And Ali McCoist, who's found goal scoring so difficult since he joined Sunderland. Getting the shot in, but Robillard collected it well. Alan Durban there trying to encourage his side. He started the game up in the director's box, but it, two goals soon brought him down to try and do something from the bench. But what he can do remains to be seen. Up down from Richie. 
that come off, and he's got it back again, and here's Cummins. Good skills from the little fella. He's found Buckley in a bit of space. Elliott has gone galloping through the middle, but Mickle joining up with the attack now. Buckley through to Elliott. Push there. Elliott tries one. What a bad effort either. Nickel linking effectively there. But Elliott did well to get away from Hansen. Sensed that the shot might be on. And it wasn't that far away from Grubbelaar's goal. Behind March beaten there by Dalgleish. Clark under pressure, robbed by Rush. Dalgleish again. Oh, inches away from his hat trick. And when everything seemed quiet, Liverpool suddenly sprung into life to pose the threat. Rush feeding Dalgleish, who was through the middle like a whippet, and his first time shot inches over the top. And Dalgleish obviously fencing his hat trick. a little flick and Dalgleish a little flick five minutes left in the first half see this Dermot breaking Lee. Lee trying to win it back again. Neil's picked it up. Dalgleish, the one two, Neil through the middle. So close again. Paul Neil had come all the way from the back. Played the one two with Dalgleish, kept on running. And it was just the bounce that beat him, really, under pressure there from Clark. He couldn't quite steer it on target. Clark must have got a touch. Because the corner kick is to Liverpool. Back for Sunis. Good job, Siddall was alert there because the nonchalance that Sunis struck the ball with then was deceptive. to the time the referee adds on four stoppages. And in fact, there goes the half-time whistle. 45 minutes dominated totally by Liverpool from beginning to end. Kenny Dalgleish scoring two goals in the first 16 minutes and Sunderland have dug their own grave so far. Two mistakes let him in and he punished them so severely. So Sunderland really do have a mammoth task if they're to try and stay in the FA Cup this season with Liverpool in masterful control. The half-time score then is Sunderland nil, Liverpool two. So the number 12, Alan Brown, has been brought on as Sunderland desperately try to do something about this two-goal deficit they face in the second half. It's a bold move by Alan Durban because it looks as though he's taken off the captain, Jeff Clark, and reshuffled his team completely. Sean Elliott has gone into the middle of the back four alongside Rob Hindmarch to allow Alan Brown to take his place up front. And straight away, Sunderland are into the attack with Pickering linking up. So, a brave move by Sunderland. Alan Brown, who had such a disastrous time after returning from Newcastle, where they said... He had a back problem, which ruled out a transfer, but he was in good form at Newcastle, and he'll certainly need to be in good form here. He needs to create anything for Sunderland. Liverpool, you may remember, have the most remarkable record here at Roker Park. It's 24 years since Sunderland last beat Liverpool here. It was in August 1958, and they still look a long way from achieving that here this afternoon. And here goes Brown. Not down there by Kennedy. And I suppose, if nothing else, then Brown's injection of pace will give the Roker Park supporters something to cheer. 
and perhaps lift their team. But it's a free kick here to Sunderland. Cummins with a kick, straight at the wall though, Jimmy Nicholl. Goes Nicol again. Corner. Well, a spirited start this by Sunderland. Liverpool have weathered many a storm. Cummins now swings this one in. Away by Neil. Nicol. Got a touch. Nicol had the Indian side over Liverpool. He's the only man on the pitch with a cup winner's medal. It was against Liverpool that he won it. And his shot deflected for another corner. Stan Cummins to take it. And Robelar collects it at the near post with Hein March putting him under pressure. Speed there, good enough to latch onto the pass slid through by Dalgleish. Brown and Ritchie. To Ritchie, who's operating rather deeper in midfield with Brown on. Buckley to the middle, Hansen away. Ritchie again. Buckley, the Koist. From Grobelar when Liverpool need it. Grobelar pulled out. An excellent example of goalkeeping. Buckley blasting the ball into the middle. McCoyce did well to collect it, turn, got the shot on target, and Grobelar was equal. Sunderland's corner. Grobelar missed it. But Whelan didn't to get it clear. And Sunderland have certainly started the second half with more conviction than they managed in the whole first 45 minutes. And the crowd seems to have responded to that as well. Alan Brown again getting to it first and finding Ritchie and Buckley. The post quickly taken to Gary Rowell. Elliot trying to get through the middle, but Neil was there. Pickering through Tom Ritchie now. Chance is this for Ritchie. But rather last positioning foiled Ritchie. Ritchie managing to escape some marking there, getting away on the right. Got the shot in, but Robola had checked back all the way. Leash didn't quite get it right. Nickel towards Brown. Foul there by Hansen. Certainly had an effect, Alan Brown, so far. Not quite sharp. Jimmy Nickel though with the free kick. out by Whelan and here he is again and the pressure though it went straight to Raul Cummins trying to turn Whelan and get on the outside of him and he's still got his work cut out Cummins gets away couldn't pull the cross back enough to test the Liverpool goal good run though by Stan Cummins Looked as though he'd been uh, driven into no man's land out there, but he still kept going and managed to get round Whelan. But the final ball rather too close to the keeper. Fine march.
Soonis. Phil Neal. Dermot. Just too high for Sammy Lee. Liverpool quite happy to try and pick their way through the defence. Raul. Nickel. Oh, that one really squeezed through to Ritchie. And they come with Del Gleish. Finding Lawrenson at the far post, nicks it back, and it's Clark who just belts it away. Phil Neal. Rush, all through for McDermott. Sorry. Don't think Terry McDermott's agreed with the referee's decision there, he's just telling him so. Uh, but a big smile at the end of it, that's what we want to see. Well, I can't imagine there'd be any injury time, in fact, there goes referee Hamill's whistle for half-time, and what a storybook start for Liverpool and for Kenny Dalglish, who's now got five goals in the last five matches. He really struck so well with those goals after six and 15 minutes, and Sunderland really so they could have lost this cup tie on the strength of those opening minutes. Liverpool have been strolling this match, their passing has been breathtaking at times, and goodness knows what Sunderland's manager is going to say to his team in the dressing room. Half time at Roker Park is Sunderland nil, Liverpool 2. Welcome back to this FA Cup time, which Liverpool totally dominated the first half. So a lot for Sunderland to do to get back into the match. As we rejoin it, five minutes into the second half, it's still Sunderland nil, Liverpool two. Oh, well won by Brown. Richie going down the right. Turning inside as the defender slipped away by Hansen. Oh, it could fall now for McCoist! What a magnificent save by Grobola. Well, I don't think McCoyce can believe his luck here as the ball comes across. He stops it without really thinking. He turns in one and look at that for a save. That is agility. Great start to the second half. Grobola's missed it this time, though. And it's hooked away by Whelan. Much better start by Sunderland. Well, Brown again winning the ball in the air, so he's won two in two against uh, Whelan and Hansen. Trying to get there himself, denied by Neil. Oh, that's a good ball through. Rich is there. Can he get it in? Oh, straight into the hands of the goalkeeper. Richie made a great blindside run and couldn't capitalise. Long ball through. Perfect good place for Tom Ritchie. But as he strikes this ball across, well, it's child's ball for Robola. Sean Elliott has switched to the centre of the defence, the position he favours, with Clark going off. And it was his header there that concedes the throw to Liverpool. And Kennedy to the wheel and There's the cross, here's McDermott. Ooh, he didn't make it count, but he was offside anyway. Terry McDermott has scored in his last two appearances at Roker Park. So another one now would do nicely for him. McCoyce did well. Robola feeds the stands.
12 minutes to go. Lee wanted it down the middle. Dermott's going to get it more down the right. Cummins is tearing back to get with him. Must make the cross now. He does. Ian Rush, and that is a magnificent goal. There's no answer to that. 3 0, it was coming all the way. McDermott into the space, and he delivers the cross at the perfect moment and with perfect precision, and there is Ian Rush tearing in his sixth FA Cup goal in only seven ties. Ian Rush scored a few for Chester, including a winning goal once at Newcastle United, and now he's put this tie beyond the reach of Sunderland. Sunderland nil, Liverpool three, and only 11 minutes to go. And Kenny Dalglish has gone off, and that's uh, going to give David Johnson a run. There is David Johnson, who scored at Barnsley in the midweek win in the League Cup. So Bob Paisley celebrating his 62nd birthday in the right style, and he knows that this tie is now Liverpool's all the way, and he can afford to rest Kenny Dalglish, who's got those two goals. Well, there's Alan Durbin, who's still shouting away. Sutherland bench, in fact he's off at his, he's off his feet. And there, still Alan Durbin talking to his players. I think a 3-0 down. Sunderland know they're on their way out of the FA Cup for another year. And there's nothing left but pride for Sunderland in this match. As I said, Liverpool at any stage of the second half could have delivered the killer blow. Ian Rush has just done that. Here's Johnson. Cross intercepted by Elliott. Oh, that's better. Here's Alan Brown. Did he get one back for Sunderland? Trying to work his way in for a shot. Cummins and Buckley. Here's Buckley. Oh, no power behind it. And Liverpool able to bring it away. Nicely touched on by Rush to Lee. Dermot crossing the halfway line. Feeding Johnson. He's got Whelan on his left. He's rushed down the middle. Chooses Lee on the right wing. Neil, thanks for getting on the act. Liverpool just countering it now. Offside flag against McDermott, making one of those runs of his from midfield. Good target right then. So it's Richie for Sunderland. So easy for Lawrenson, who's off on his own. He's got McDermott ahead of him. He's rush on the left. Must surely feed McDermott now, which he does. Could it be four? There's the cross. Oh, there's Johnson. Well, how did that not go in? <laughs> A smile on David Johnson's face, but he'd be disappointed with that. Again, it's McDermott in space on the right. Gets the cross in perfectly. And Johnson, well, you wonder how on earth he can miss from there. If she's not been on the field long enough to get the feel of it. Raoul on his own accord. Now Lee. Don't think that will get through. Well, Sunderland have been chasing shadows much of this afternoon. And there's no way past Lawrence. And Lawrence now going up in support of his attack. No reason why he shouldn't do either. David Johnson. Good ball through. He's offside. Ian Rush just straying into that offside position. Free kick to 
Sunderland, the push in the back by Hansen on McCoist. There's Buckley trying to get the cross in, chested down by Neil, and finds Lee in the centre of the field this time. That's a good ball for Johnson on the left. Johnson running at Elliott, holding possession until Lee joins him. Souness, six minutes to go. Sammy Lee, he feels he'd have so many men available. There's one of them, Souness, little clip through, McDermott! So oh, that would have been a glorious goal. Every time McDermott comes up on the right, there is a problem for Sunderland. The ball through is by Souness, perfectly clipped, and the blind run for McDermott, but he can't get the shot on target. I wonder what goes through Alan Durban's mind at a time like this when his side has not just been beaten, they've been totally destroyed. We're inside the last minute. You hear a cheer go up from the Liverpool contingent who have come northeast this afternoon. And that final whistle goes. Liverpool will show the slope down now for this last thrust as Dermot and Lee again work it. So a last throw for Sunderland and Alan Brown is in the clear. He's going to have to be quick because Lawrence is coming over. And will he shoot? Oh, he can't get it on target. That really sums up Sunderland's day, I think. Alan Brown was put into the clear by a good long ball. He got inside Lawrenson all right, but he struck it with his right foot and it was never going to be on target. A disappointed young man. And that's it. Liverpool are through to the fifth round. Two goals from Kenny Dalglish and then Ian Rush applying the killer touch with that third goal. In the last ten minutes, it was always on the cards. And so Liverpool keep up this amazing record at Roker Park. They haven't lost here since 1958-59 season. And in all honesty, there was no way this afternoon that they were going to be beaten. So Liverpool go marching confidently on to the fifth round of the Cup. Final score at Roker Park, Sunderland nil, Liverpool three. Well, that really was Liverpool at their best. But the best individual performance of the day belonged to Huddersfield Town striker Peter Fletcher, who bagged a...